Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is James and welcome back to The Soundline. Uh, so we actually just got some new amps and some new Arcam amplifiers and a CD player. I thought, you know what, I might as well make a video about it. We've been waiting for these amps to come in for a while now. They are the replacement for the A series. If you're familiar with Arcam, you know the A19, the A29, the A39 amplifier. And also the CD player is replacing the CD S27, I think was the model number of it. So I thought I might as well make an unboxing video, get a reaction, see how they're different. Um, I think I know a little bit about what to expect, but I don't know if they've changed them at all cosmetically or aesthetically, you know, so I thought I'd let's unbox them and see what they look like. So we've got our Arcam A19 here. This is the last one of these that we have. If I would get the sun, let's just... That's a bit better now I can see. So we've got the Arcam A19 here. As I say, yes, this is the last one of these that we have because we have officially sold out of all the other models so this is the current well current remaining this is the last generation these are going to be the new ones so let's unbox them and do a comparison we have the SA20 integrated amplifier the SA10 and the new CD player which is the CDS50 I'll grab a knife let's open them up first Manual, remote, that remote looks pretty much the same. This way, there is a power cord in the bottom. We'll just leave that in there. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get a look at them side by side. So this is the older model on the bottom, the A19, and the new SA20, which is their new top one on top. So you can see they actually have changed the look of it quite a significant amount. The screen is a lot bigger for one. Volume knob feels about the same. The A19 feels a little bit less, like has a little bit less resistance, but that might just be because it's older. Little tact switches. Oh yes, that's a big power button, which is a little bit plasticky and rattly but actually if I'm honest that feels a lot more solid and mechanical than this I feel like the relay in this one that it's clicking is a lot stronger it's hard to tell let's have a look at the back it's quite a significant difference in color this is like kind of like a dark cool gray I would say if I could get the focus right um, whereas this is closer to like a gun metal with obviously silver knobs. On the back here, biggest thing you notice is these massive speaker terminals difference. I believe these ones here are what they use on the FMJ AVR series, except for the AVR 850. The 850 has really good gold ones, but I believe the 550 and the 390 uses these big terminals. It can work for bananas or forks, I think. Yep, forks or just raw wire going through the hole. They feel alright. We've got we've got a Phono MM input. Interesting. Did it, you know, that was Phono MM as well. I do like that now the ground connector is above the Phono plugs as opposed to on the old model where Phono is here and ground is way over here. Pre-out, analog input, CD, PBR, STB, CD, PBR, no STB, but like you know, this one's got one, two, three, four, five, six six inputs, this only has three plus the phono, so they have cut down the analog inputs on the new model, but now you've got digital as well. So that kind of saves, that, that kind of saves on that, you know, you've got coaxial, um, Blu-ray and AV inputs, as well as an optical input. Network connection for software updates, RS-232 control, that's good, that's gonna be good if you're using it in a, uh, in a in-home control system setup. What the USB port is for, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it has some ba a U basic USB DAC in it. I don't know, you could plug memory stick in it possibly. Either that or it would just be for servicing. Doesn't seem to have 
Oh, that's good. This one has a 6 volt trigger output. This one doesn't have any trigger outputs. It's interesting. Other than that, relatively the same on the back. Let's power it up, shall we? Okay, so I've got them both hooked up to power. This is what the old one looks like. It's a green lighting. And the new one. Oh, we've gone to sort of a blue color now. Bit more information, this one is a dot matrix, as opposed to this, which you can see is the old, you know, number style display with a few indicators down below it. Your volume, mute. I noticed that it takes a little while to change source, so if I do it too quick, it doesn't catch up. See, it's a bit slow, but, um, orcs, click, yeah. it like seems to have a little relay that takes about half a second to tick over. I see we actually, yeah, we've lost our balance button, so this, the previous models, you have a balance and a display, whereas this one, nothing. Maybe there's some things you can do with the remote that are different. So I see the remote here, we've got, so we do have a display button and an info button, quick line input buttons, no menu or anything like that, we've got balance, oh look at that, it's, it's even doing the old one as well. So they obviously haven't changed the remote or the signal much at all because this is controlling both of them. The old one's actually responding to the remote a lot quicker than the new one. See that? Display. At least this lights up. Don't know if you can see that, but it's lighting up. Oh, I see. So this remote here actually, the, only the bottom section is for controlling the amp. Whereas the top section is for controlling the CD player. I see. So you only need one remote to control all the devices. It does have a standby mode. Okay, that's about it. So that's about the majority of the comparison between the two models. Um, initial thoughts are that, like, I like that now we have some digital inputs on our amplifiers, which means that we can sell these to people who want uh, turntables as well as, you know, inputs from something like a TV or a DVD player, because typically we would normally have to sell that sort of customer something like a NAD, which isn't a bad product, it's just a different brand. Um, but personally, most of us here at Soundline think that the Arcams particularly sound much nicer for turntable um, for listening to records. They've got a much more natural uh, style of amplification as opposed to digital, which is what NAD use a lot more. They use AB class, which we think just sounds better with records. Apart from that, pro, I'm thinking, like I feel like the operating system in this new model, the SA20, is feeling a little bit clunky and a bit slow compared to the previous model, which seemed a lot more solid state and quick and fast. Like this one, you can just go through all of them like like it's just much, it seems much slower use the on off button see that turned on but this one didn't like it just seems a bit slower to respond that may not necessarily be a bad thing in terms of its software it might actually be a protection thing or maybe now it just takes time for digital transistors to switch over sources as opposed to this which might have been more more clunky mechanical style let's just try a real quick boot up test and they're going to boot on if i do this a little bit slower on this one from standby this one here is definitely much faster turning on from standby like you can just on, turn it back on. It's just feels a bit quicker. Okay, well that's the uh, that's the amplifier. I imagine the SA10 is going to look much the same as what the SA20 does. Have the same sort of inputs. The main difference between the two is just power output. So what I'll undo, what I'll do next is I'll unbox the CD player and we'll have a look at that and set it next to its amp and see what it thinks. See what we uh, think of it. See how it looks. realize these got a little peely film on them to come off home disk okay so eject okay. 
See how quickly it loads this. I'm gonna hit play as soon as I can. SACD, eight tracks. So it is an SACD player as well. And there we go. And from this remote here, from the end, we should have full control of our CD player. Pause, yep, mode, repeat one, repeat, shuffle, random. Okay, so by pushing info, you can see more info on display about what you're playing. So display on this one allows you to dim the CD player. Don't know if you guys can see that that's dimming. Okay, and this CD player must have some USB input, uh, some digital inputs in the back because it's got all these things here. So you've got coax, USB, disc, optical. Let's have a look at the back of it because I forgot to do that. Okay, oh it's got balanced um, output, balanced analog output, um, XLR and single ended RCAs. Digital input, coax or plus optical, IR in and trigger input. RS232 control, USB input, digital outputs, optical and coaxial, antenna input and network input. What is the antenna for? Must be wireless or Bluetooth or something. It's, it's not an FM antenna. So, oh yeah, there we go. So it says on the front here, it's, I'm not going to be able to zoom in on there, but it says ultra high performance 32 bit DAC, which is pretty much what all of this um, stuff here is and presumably uh, I'm still not sure about that USB port because if that was USB audio input you'd think it would be over here next to the digital in but then again USB is a source on here USB no device not sure okay well obviously guys I've got a little bit of you know reading up to do a little bit of learning to figure out exactly what the full potential of both of these devices is um, Thank you for watching today's video. Keep an eye on our website if you, you know, if you look at our website or our blog or our Facebook page or anything like that because I imagine both of these and the SA10 will be going up on the website very shortly with prices to, so you guys can know how much they are and what they're worth. Um, thank you for watching today's video guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Any questions you've got for me, drop them down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Choose to be happy and I'll catch you in the next video. Kakitiano.